Hey guys, welcome back to a new mixed media time lapse. In this video, I'm going to be working in one of my art journals. And I recently invested in some watercolor pens. And I'm going to be doing a good bit of experimenting with them in this video. Over the years, I have accumulated so many art supplies that it isn't very often that I actually purchase new things. And it is even rarer that I manage to find some type of medium that I really haven't tried out at all. I've done a little bit of everything, including watercolor and other types of water soluble kind of watercolor-esque materials. But when it comes to watercolor pens or watercolor markers, I haven't really delved into that world too much. So I will leave a link in the description of this video to the Amazon listing that I purchased. But this is a set of 48 colors in a medium that I really didn't know anything about. So this video is pretty much my first impressions video. A lot of times when I do first impressions videos, I do them more real time. But for this particular video, I did do a voiceover time lapse just because I couldn't get everything set up to do it more real time while I was experimenting with the supplies. I kind of just wanted to dive into them and just really play with them right away just because I was so excited. And so I will just be telling you my thoughts on these pens as kind of a retrospect kind of thing. Now again, because this medium is so new to me, I wasn't really sure how to use them at first. I use them a lot like I would just any markers especially because the paper that I'm working on in this particular journal, it is a mixed media paper that I bound into this journal by hand, but it is not a watercolor paper. So when it comes to actually activating these pens, it doesn't like to spread out in the way that you would expect it to. However, this is not the pen's fault. This is entirely my using them on a paper that wasn't necessarily meant for them. I did some separate experiments with these watercolor pens on actual watercolor paper, and they do exactly what I would expect them to do. You lay them down, you activate them with the water brush pen that actually comes with the set, and they flow outwards from the original marks Sometimes there's a little bit of residue left over where you put down your initial marks, but I would say that for water-soluble media, that's pretty common. And they do blend together if you put down multiple colors and then activate them with water together. So I definitely am very excited to try these out on perhaps a single illustration or something of the like where I just use watercolor paper as my base. However, for the purpose of this video, the main time-lapse portion is just me working on a mixed media paper. Also, as of the recording of this video, I have actually purchased a watercolor ground. And as far as I'm able to tell, the way that this is supposed to work is that you put it down on your paper and it kind of creates a I don't know if watercolor paper effect is the correct term, but it basically makes it so that surfaces that are not necessarily intended for use with watercolors become a watercolor surface. This actually has not arrived for me yet, and I haven't been able to experiment with it, so I can't tell you whether or not it works, but that is something that I might end up using or talking about on this channel in the future. I might end up doing some kind of comparison on how a paper works without the ground versus with the ground versus an actual watercolor paper, just to kind of give that perspective on things. 
and I'm really excited for that to get here because then I can continue to experiment and try new things and use these same new supplies in even more different ways. Now talking about the spread that I am working on itself, there were so many colors in this set of watercolor pens that I decided to limit myself to just a few of them. I mainly used pinks and purples with a few blues and browns mixed in there. Although I wasn't necessarily stopping myself from dipping into any of the other colors, I think having a little bit of a palette or something to start with made it a lot easier to use something like this where there are so many colors available to you. Now another thing that's kind of different about this art journal spread in particular is actually the size of the journal. If you have seen my art journal videos before, I tend to work pretty small and it has been a while since I worked this large. Now I understand that this isn't even remotely large for some people. This journal is I believe around 6 by 9 but when I'm pretty used to working on pages that are about 3 by 4 this feels very large. You will kind of see me in this spread process kind of trying to figure out how to fill this much space. Because I work so small typically there's not usually enough room for much more than just a face and if you have hair that's kind of flowing it covers almost everything. However, I wanted to draw a full figure in this spread, and I actually ended up turning her into a mermaid a little ways into the sketch, and she didn't fill up as much of the space that a face I would draw typically might. I think it also had something to do with the actual pose that she was in. This girl has her hands kind of behind her head, and if her arms were kind of flowing more or were going off in different directions, I think it would fill the space a little bit differently. However, I do like the finished result, the way that she actually looks on the page and the way that the pose works with a mermaid. It was just interesting trying to figure out how to continue filling that space and make it feel cohesive. Now this spread in particular was actually worked over several days and I do typically jump around quite a bit in my art journals. It's not very often that I sit down and create a spread from start to finish. I like to do a little bit on this page here and a little bit on this page there and maybe I will get caught up in something like drawing a singular face, but it's not an intentional I'm sitting down to finish something. And I think the fact that this journal is so much bigger than I'm used to kind of added even more time to that process. Altogether, this spread, I think, out of all of my recording sessions is about three hours of footage. And I actually even worked on it some off camera. So I wouldn't be surprised if this took five or six hours, and there's no way that I could have done that in one sitting. Not only is it very difficult for me in how busy I am to carve out that much uninterrupted time, I think that I would get burnt out or just wouldn't have the motivation to keep going on one thing for so long. I think that this is a thing that a lot of artists struggle with. They feel as though they want a finished product, and although I completely understand that type of desire, I think what I have learned is that sometimes I have to be satisfied with finished elements. So if all I have time for on one particular day is to write down a quote, if I do it in a kind of semi-detailed manner where it's more lettering than it is simply writing, it feels like a finished part. Though the spread itself might not be complete, 
there are finished bits within those unfinished pages. And to me, that in and of itself is satisfying. And some days you may end up being able to put aside more time for these types of things. But when you don't have that, five minutes is still a perfectly acceptable way of creating. So before I sign off for this video, I kind of want to talk some of my final thoughts for these watercolor pens. Although I don't really have a whole lot to compare them to because as I said, I haven't really worked with watercolor pens before. I did thoroughly enjoy using them in this spread. I kind of do wish that I had been working on watercolor paper or a watercolor ground or something like that. However, I did end up quite liking the effect of using the pens over top of acrylic paint. So the mixed media paper itself did not like to activate the pen at all. However, if I was working over top of acrylic paint, it would do two things. One, it would kind of sink in and it would absorb into the paint and it would become much lighter of a color than it initially came out as which made it really great for adding these subtle shadows that I was kind of trying to achieve. And also, once I had used it on top of the acrylic, I actually could activate it with water and kind of pull it out for more of a watercolor effect. Because it was on top of the acrylic and it was soaking in, it was still quite subtle. I would be interested to see how it would act on something that wasn't acrylic paint and was just a full sheet of watercolor paper, for instance. Like I said, I had done a few little tests and experiments on watercolor paper, but none of those experiments were full drawings. They were just little swatches where I was playing around with things. So you will probably be seeing something like that in the near future. All in all, I really like these watercolor pens and I'm excited to experiment with them more and try out new things with them to see how they interact with some of my other supplies that I might have with different surfaces, with the watercolor ground, just all of the different things that I love so much about mixed media and kind of seeing how I can get them to play with each other. So that's about all that I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this time-lapse process video and that you liked getting a little bit of insight into my creative process, both in the actual act of creation and my words about how my creative process works. If you would like to see more exclusive content from me, things like videos, prompts, zines, tutorials, and just whatever else I decide to put on there, I have a Patreon page that I will link in the description of this video. Now is a really great time to join that because it is still pretty near the beginning of the month. And the way that Patreon works is it charges you up front and then it charges you at the beginning of the next month. So because it is near the beginning of the month, it's a really good time to join in on something like that. There is an exclusive Facebook group for only members of the Patreon page and we're all just trying to inspire each other. So again, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, happy creating.